Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, you can see spring is here in southern Alabama, at least for this week. You can see the gorgeous blue sky. Ah, oh, yeah. So I'm out here getting started in some of my garden stuff. And uh, I did a few things, and then I thought, oh, I should film this. So here I am. Let me show you what I've been doing. First of all, you can't probably see that, but I have planted the bare root stock. It was potted up, but it had been potted up very recently, so it's fundamentally still pretty much bare root. That is a ginkgo tree, and this is this little nook around the side of my front yard. And then I planted two roses uh, right there and there that are um, floribundas. One is a deep purpley magenta called Celestial Nights, and the other one is a yellow with pink kind of speckly f flowers, and it's called Pop Art. They're, they were new ones that uh, our, my local plant center just got in. And then now this is what I'm doing. I have these black grow bag raised bed things, and they're eight foot long by two foot deep, and I bought them at Tractor Supply over a year ago because I was going to use them last year. Never got them started and filled and things. So I am going to, I thought I had enough room to put both of them like along here, but I don't. So I'm putting one eight foot one here and then the other one is behind me. It's, I don't know if it's going to stay there. I haven't decided where it's going to live. So we'll get one filled and then we'll figure the other one out. And what I am doing is I'm going to fill it almost to the top with many of my free leaves here and then I will get some bagged soil to top off the rest of it so I can plant flowers. My idea is, my vision is, let me back up here so you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay. Um, this area here, it's going to be a little bit of a mini cut flower farm, I believe. So dahlias, sunflowers, cosmos, uh whatever else I, I find. Because this little ginkgo tree is not going to be providing a lot of shade in the next season or two. So I'll have plenty of sun over here to grow things. And I am envisioning tall cut flowers along here, a bit of a living screen, if you will. Some tall sunflowers and maybe some hollyhocks over here, something nice and old fashioned. Um, and also along this fence line here, tall, to, to, to kind of screen me from the neighbors and the alley. That is my vision, and we will see where it goes. And then the rest of this front get bed, as time allows and money allows and acquisitions of seeds and plants and whatnot, I'm gonna fill this in with all kinds of beautiful, hopefully, flowers. It's going to just be a big, and herbs, and probably a vegetable plant or ten for this season. <coughs> Make it a living, a living landscape instead of a lawn, because you can see what my lawn looks like. That's what the whole front yard looked like uh, before. Now I'm going to give you a little tip on doing this leaf lasagna. It's working great. I when I dug those holes ground underneath it was perfect and all the sod which isn't really sod because I don't have lawn but the greenery underneath was dead if you're going to do this leaf lasagna no dig method when you put your cardboard down make sure you take all the plastic packing tape off of the cardboard boxes before you put them in your garden my friend who so kindly did come in and do this work for me uh, she didn't do that and so now as I'm digging holes I'm finding strips of plastic pla packing tape that are not they're not gonna biodegrade so I'm having to like pull it up it's kind of a hassle so just let that um, and I knew that but she didn't know that and it's all good she she kind of forced me <laughs> to um, 
get this project going, which I appreciate because I might not have gotten it going uh, last summer like I needed to. And so it's had plenty of time to uh, kill what's underneath it and decompose and start making some good garden space up here. So it's all good in the neighborhood, but now I'm just going to start putting more, pla more um, fill in those raised bed bags, grow bags with leaves and the leaves will break down, they'll compost down and I'll have to keep topping up the bags as time goes on. But for now, busy street today. I'm not going to be planting in these grow bags uh, like today or tomorrow or anything. I haven't even got my dahlia bulbs and I haven't started seeds, but I do have my seeds set up, starting set up, going, uh, uh, set up, the set up set up in the house. And now it just needs another day to get the seeds in it. And I ordered more seeds online. So when those come in, I will share a little seed haul with you and tell you what we're growing. But um, for now, let's get everything prepared so that when those seeds come and get started and start growing into plants, I'll have a place to put them. Right? Right. All right, we'll go get it done. So here we go, these are the bags. And I'm also gonna put some of these plant clippings in here from the boxwood that I trimmed or removed the other day. Just again, add some bulk. Again, to just clean up the lawn a little bit from my mess the other day. All right. Because what I'm planning to grow in here is mostly annual flowers this year, the amount of soil doesn't have to be that high uh, because the roots are not that deep. And that's all the uh, leaves that I had scraped out of from underneath where this is sitting so it was level. I just kind of put in it. Got it down to the almost rotted cardboard there. But I have more leaves around the side of the house. And at least one bag of potting soil. So I'm gonna go get that, bring it around, and I think I'm gonna add a few more leaves. We'll see. Yeah, because it'll mash down and I want it to be, you know, it'll have room to uh, mash down. That one over there, I think that one I'm going to fill the same way, uh, and that might be where I grow my tomatoes this year. And then around the base of the tomatoes, of course, some, some basil plants, some other herbs like maybe some thyme, and then 
flowers, marigolds, so the low growing marigolds, sweet alyssum, that kind of thing. Great complementary plants for your tomatoes. Shade the soil, bring in the pollinators, and just make everything a little prettier. That's what I think I'm going to do with that grow bag. So I want it against a fence or something so that I have, although, you know, it's not going to give it a lot. I'm still going to have to stake and support if I put tomatoes in there. But now I'm questioning, should I put my tomatoes against my fence? And will that invite, uh, how shall we say it, neighbors? deciding that if it's on the outside of the fence, that it's free reign. Now I might grow probably Sweet 100s, Cherokee Purples, and San Marzano's. I think those are the three tomatoes I wanna grow because I want paste tomatoes, San Marzano's for um, canning, preserving, cherry tomatoes for just good old fashioned eating and making sun-dried tomatoes. And I just love Cherokee Purples um, be, that's the beef stick because the flavor's delicious. They're interesting looking. I think that's what I'm going to do. Probably two San Marzanos, a cherry tomato, and one Cherokee purple and hope for the best. And remember, I don't need, keep reminding myself that currently I do not need 50 feet row, a 50 foot row of tomatoes. I am not going to eat that many. I'm not going to can that many. If I grew that many this year, I wouldn't have to grow them again for decades because I would can them, preserve them, and uh, have more tomatoes than I need. Now I could sell tomatoes and give them to friends, but keeping it's trying to remind myself, and it's so hard this time of year, when you wanna get out here and you wanna get planting and you wanna get seed starting, that you just wanna plant and you get those seed catalogs or you get on the websites and you watch the YouTubers and you're like, oh, I wanna grow that and I wanna grow that and I wanna grow that and I think, well, how many heads of cabbage did you actually eat last year? Not that many. So having, even though they look beautiful in the garden, I don't need to grow. And I also have to remember where, I, where I'm growing. It is very warm out here already, first week of February. I'm not gonna be coming out here and farting around with my garden beds a whole lot come July and August. We know that. I don't do heat. All right, let's get back to work.
All right, that was a two cubic foot bag of potting soil mix. I bought it last spring to put in uh, pots on my deck. And then the pots on my deck got stolen off my porch, so I um, didn't ever use it. But that's all it filled. And so you can see that if I were to fill these two foot deep by with bagged soil, it would take me quite a bit of soil. Now I do have the intention, and I'm trying to source some farm-made local compost. I think I have a, I think I have a, a place. Anyway, I need to go put my hat on and some more sunscreen, I think. We forget that we can get sun damage in February, <laughs> at least down here we can. I either need to go buy two or three more bags of bagged soil just to get this going and then whatever I have to put in that one, probably four bags in that one, uh, or wait till I get my locally sourced compost and fill, you know, top them with that. Depends on when I can get the compost and if I can get the compost. So today's projects are not going to be finished, but that's how life works. I think I'll go get another bag uh, or two of leaves and at least get the leaves in that one over there. And uh, then, I, then, then it won't blow away and it's less likely to get net, nicked from my friendly neighborhood crackheads who like to steal things and resell them at... I don't know where they resell them, but they do. I also get really annoyed when people steal from me, to say the least. Okay, another tangent with Beth. So, uh, what am I going to do today? The next thing I think I'm going to do, perhaps, since it's nice still and I can't finish this job, well, I'm, first I'm going to go look in the shed. I might have another bag of, or at least a half a bag, of topsoil or potting soil. If I do, I'll come and put that in here. And then I'm going to do the leaves over there, which you've already seen me do. But then I found some baby trees. My own little tree nursery growing in the kind of wild area at the edge of my lot over there. And they're oak trees. They're southern oaks, southern live oaks, like my big tree you can't see from here. That's at the end of the big lot. They're her babies, I think. And I'm going to try to carefully dig at least one of them up today. I desperately need parkway trees to shade the front of my house in the afternoon, to shade the tree, the tra shade the street in general, and uh, and where these little trees are growing back in there, they'll never reach a good maturity. Um, but if they do, they're going to be in the way. They're too close to the fence, they're too close to the lot line, they're, in a, they're not in a good place. So I think they're baby enough that I can dig them up, and it's still cool, and wet enough that they'll take have time this spring to establish themselves. So I'll take you along for that after I finish this stuff that I'm not going to show you do show me doing the same thing over again. So we'll see you. Well, I'll see you just in a second, but I have about an hour's worth of work yet to do before I get there. Okay, I did some squishing. And if I had done the squishing and pulled that one just four inches further that way before I filled it with dirt. It would really fit, but it fits well enough. I got all eight sections. Now, this is either a brilliant accident or going to be a problem. I don't know which. That downspout comes right there. And it's either going to water that bag for me or going to get backed up because it's against that bag. Uh, but one, I don't think that downspout, I have some gutter issues above it, so I'm not sure how much water comes out of it anyway when it rains. And two, it wouldn't be that big of a job, uh, to disconnect that elbow down there and turn it 90 degrees. So it comes more, well, not even 45 degrees. So it comes out this way and then put a splash guard on it. We'll see what happens the next time it rains. But now... And grow my tomatoes and my flowers all on this porch make a beautiful floral screen for my porch and this section is where I'm trying to engineer how to make a 
catio for the cats. Uh, I think I talked about it in a different video that I never probably uploaded. So I am going to screen and or f wire fence in this entire little nook corner of this porch and get um, a cat flap that goes on in the window oh, so I can open the window a little bit and then the cats can come and go out onto the porch but see, be safe inside their little catio. So, bird feeders, flowers attracting hummingbirds and other little birds and the cats will be very happy, I think. Here's a really quick recycling garden tip for you. You want some waterproof, reusable plant seedling markers. I looked at them today at uh, Tractor Supply and a pack of, I don't remember, I don't, I don't remember. It was a couple bucks for a pack of few. I don't know, I've bought them before, but I'm like, and I'm sorry, I've already started to cut this apart, but I had a milk jug, whatever. And I cut it apart, I cut the bottom off of it, I cut the sides off of it. And now, and I, I used a knife and it was not very neat. So I can neaten up the edges. And I can cut it into 